Hello, and welcome to my video review for the Transformers Generation Fall of Cybertron Voyager Class Soundwave and his accompanying mini cassettes. Soundwave in his alt mode is a quote communications truck, uh, which looks similar to his uh, earlier deluxe toy, which I do not have, um, but is is much less sleek and is a uh, a little bulkier, he looks a little more like a van. Um, his main gimmick in both modes is that he is able to contain uh, several data disc style micro cassette characters. Uh, in this case, he currently has Ravage, Laserbeak, and um, I believe it is Rumble inside of him right now. And there you see my one major complaint about this figure is that the front portion here has a tendency to disconnect and fall down. So you get this kind of a very silly look. Um, the nice thing is these teeth here are actually articulated separately. So you are able to bend them independent of the actual chest piece. So while it doesn't look as cool, what I will sometimes do is get the visor piece in place and then use the teeth by folding them inwards to secure it there. So you get more of a cow catcher type of look. Definitely not as imposing, but it does keep this in place. Alrighty. To transform Soundwave, you can start by taking his gun off. And we are going to transform him with the micro cassettes inside and go over them after his robot mode. So the first thing you should do is pull up this back piece and kind of get that out of the way. After that, you can split these two side panels and reveal his head. And you want to detach his toes from the back of his body. After you do that, you can disconnect the legs from the side paneling right here and straighten them out. You can also rotate this leg bit down and put out the foot. Again on the other side. And there you have Soundwave's legs. <clears throat> now, what you're going to do is take these wheels and fold them out slightly. Flatten this back down. Sorry. This was up. You're going to flatten this back down against the chest. And you're going to unfold these arm portions right here. And at the same time, you can move the wheels back. <clears throat> now, these side panels peg into the side of his body, so you can pull them out. And they are on a double hinge, so you want to swing that hinge up and fold this in create the shoulder and the arm. Again, disconnect this, fold it up, fold this panel down, and turn the arm. Now you want to just take his entire torso area, and rotate it down until it clicks into place and this back portion you'll notice this part's actually on a slider so what you can do is you can take this and bend it all the way down and then slide this portion in so it sits nice and firm against there 
then you can just use your finger to pop out both the hands. And lastly, you can take his side cannon and apply it to his shoulder. And there you have Generations Fall of Cybertron Voyager class Soundwave in his bot form. Now you will notice that he has a rather large plunger sized piece of kibble on his back. And uh, this is actually for the gimmick that you've probably seen accidentally open several times in this video. Um, there's a button here on his body that when you press it, releases the front part of his chest and reveals the data disk portion of this. How this works is that there is a shaft, basically, that these discs store in, and a plunger. And you push this plunger forward, and it shoots the discs out. It's pretty straightforward. Unfortunately, there's a slight issue with it, and I will attempt to display it now. I find it helps if you straighten this out, just so you're not putting a undue strain on these parts. Okay, so this one came out very well. This one also came out very well. Awesome. Hmm. Ah. Well, all three of them came out very well. That was actually much better than it has ever been for me in the year that I've owned this. Um, <clears throat> I stand corrected. Generally, um, if you will notice, let me see if I can get it here, there are tiny tabs, both here, 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 and there. And uh, they're kind of like ridges that run along the inside that are meant to keep the discs in place. And I'm assuming they have started to finally wear down enough that this isn't a problem. But uh, for the majority of the time I've owned this figure, getting the smaller cassettes uh, in and out of this chest piece has required them clearing these little tabs and it's generally required a, a, a decent amount of force. I wouldn't say shoving them to the point at which I ever thought I was going to break it, um, but definitely getting them in was, was a little difficult. Oops. The problem I had getting them out uh, is a little different. As you can see the screw here is actually at the top of this round plate. And uh, the screw is actually attached to the bar that travels through this toy right here. And the actual plate extends all the way down to here. So the plunger is at the very top of the plate. And the problem with that, and you can kind of see it here a little bit, the problem with that is that all of the force and pressure that you're exerting on these discs as you pop them out is coming from the top part of a round piece of plastic. So I'm relatively convinced that at some point in the life of this toy this is gonna break. Um, I'm not sure why they didn't figure out a way to engineer this so that the pressure was coming from the center of it because that would have alleviated that issue entirely. Um, but I'm guessing just for transformation reasons and where they needed to have this this plunger piece uh, on the figure they weren't able to do that. Um, fortunately I don't notice any actual stressing or cracking anywhere. I haven't ever heard any cracking, so it's possible that they uh, accounted for this and they've made this piece very sturdy. Um, I've never seen anyone say that it's broken on theirs, so it's just something to keep in mind. I haven't necessarily uh, discovered it being a problem. Anyway, once the data disks are out and this uh, plunger portion is sitting flush, the nice thing is this back piece can now collapse down quite snugly all against his back and really reduce his amount of kibble to just these little wheels right here which which are not a problem for me and uh, as far as I'm concerned that is a 
pretty epic bot mode for Soundwave. I know not everyone is a fan of the uh, Fall of Cybertron aesthetic, I understand that, but uh, for what he is and for the design he's based off of, he's pretty perfect. Uh, he's definitely a little boxy up in this area with a very small torso, so that's, that's a little bit off. Um, nothing like the diaper wave uh, titanium version, but it's, it's, it's not perfect proportions, but uh, I think it's definitely passable. It's definitely one of my favorite sound waves that we've gotten in the past couple of years. Now I am going to go over the three cassettes that I have, along with Soundwave. Soundwave comes with three different micro cassettes. In this case, they are calling them data disks. Uh, in order, they are, well, Frumble, I'm not sure in this particular case whether or not they're calling this Rumble or Frenzy. I think they usually go blue with Frenzy in the US, and this is the Hasbro, so I'll stick with that. Um, actually, I think that's entirely inaccurate. I believe it's the opposite. Either way, he's Frumble. Um, this is Ravage, and this is Laserbeak. The interesting thing about these is that they are spring-loaded, as I'm sure you're, everyone knows at this point. Uh, so when you drop them, they actually auto-transform into their true modes. Some of them require a little bit uh, of finessing afterwards, like you have to open this guy's feet and put his arms down, which is fine. And some of them, like Ravage, require a little bit more effort. You have to uh, rotate his feet down and pull his legs out and kind of extend his back and pop his tail through and get him all situated. But these are the three data disk cassette minions that come well, uh, I believe only Laserbeak comes with him, and these two are sold in a pack. And there's also a pack that you can get that has, uh, I believe it's Buzzsaw and whichever one they're not calling this guy, so Frumble 2. Um, I do not have that pack, I generally don't get recolors of figures. So, one other thing I would mention before the video is over. There's not really much uh, play interaction that comes with these guys. Um, they're not entirely in scale, it's not terrible, but uh, Ravage should be much larger, and, and really so should Frumble here. Um, the one cool thing I have been able to find is that you can, if you try hard enough, get Soundwave here to hold his birdie friend which is quite nice. And I actually am now realizing that uh, he also has a... I believe he should have another weapon. Although it's possible that I am remembering that incorrectly. I just moved, so a lot of my stuff is coming out of storage. So I apologize if he should have another gun. Uh, I do have it, so if anyone likes, needs to see it for some reason, uh, let me know and I'll, I'll shoot an update video. Um, that is it for the Generations Voyager class Soundwave. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching.